Hi everybody, this is Reese Barber from Audiology Associates. Thank you very much for watching our earwax removal compilation video today. That never gets any easier to say quickly. So you can see now that we've got this uh, in this first patient, the ear canal itself, rather than being this kind of round shape, it's more this oval shape and it's slightly twisted off to one side. So this patient hasn't been really feeling uh, any hearing loss at the moment, but just, just this irritated feeling inside the ear, something squishing there. And when they're laying on their ear at night, um, they're feeling quite blocked up when they get up in the morning. You can see we've got this quite hard piece here it's quite flat uh, in correlation with the, the size and shape of the ear canal so we've just got the standard size on the tube on the edge of this and we're just drawing this down the canal at the moment so we're just trying to work this out oh guys I need to ask you a question at the end so if you don't mind staying tuned for that one that'd be great um, and you can see we've just got a good grip on this out it comes, quite a long flat piece. Now you can see this is quite dark as well. Now if you follow the channel for a little while, you know that when earwax is dark, it means it's old because it oxidizes with, uh, with air. So it gets this much darker color the longer it's been in the ear canal. Now there is this little piece of wax right at the very top of the canal. So we've got the fine end on here. So slightly finer tube going in so we can do more delicate pinpoint work. And we're just gonna peel this from the top of the canal. There we go, starting to come away. There we are, you can see a couple of little bits of hair on the outside edge as well. Now this patient had be also been experiencing a few uh, bits of popping and crackling. I'll explain that in a second. So when we take a look at the eardrum, have a look at the bottom of the eardrum and you'll, uh, we'll point out a little ring, but you'll see lots of outlines at the bottom there. Now those are outlines of ear bubbles. So what's been happening with this patient, they've been getting some fluid in the middle ear space, and every time they've been yawning and swallowing and chewing, the eustachian tube's been opening, allowing air in, which is bubbling up through that fluid. And what you can see is that those outlines are where the bubbles have actually stuck to the back of the eardrum. So it's quite common to see these after somebody's had a bout of middle ear uh, effusion, and it started to drain away, so they're starting to come out the other side of it. So this is the second patient in the compilation here. Very similar story to the first one, not really experiencing any hearing issues as such, but more of an irritation and feeling that something's moving in their ear canal all the time. So we've got the uh, standard size on the tube on here and you can see when wax gets this much lighter color. Now, in my experience when it's lighter like this, it does tend to be harder wax, usually because there's lots of little skin flakes in there and keratin in there. So it gives this a much lighter appearance and it does get quite tough. So you can see here, we've got this flakes and these kind of uh, layers of bits of wax and, and kind of dry skin and stuff coming away here. I'm trying to lift this up. You can see how this would have been quite irritating for the patient because it's quite solid. So we've got the uh, Jobson horn in here now. We're hoping we can get a grip on the side of this. We can slowly draw this down the canal. You can see I'm trying to pull this down from the top. The rear section, the darker section, don't forget the older section there is starting to move uh, forwards with it. And you almost go over the top with it, but it needs to come a bit further forward before we can do that safely. There we are, we've managed to get behind it. That back bit does tend to be a tough piece as well. There we go, if we've got a grip on the whole thing, up it comes. So you can see this was quite a hard, solid piece of wax. So it really would have been irritating that patient's ear canal because it'll withdraw movement, the outer part of your ear canal, the cartilaginous part of the canal, is flexing constantly with jaw movement. So what's been happening is it's been kind of rubbing and irritating next to it. So we can see good looking eardrum there, good light reflex. You'll see little blood vessels on the hammer bone there as well, just coming down. But on the whole looking good. So this is what we removed. So it's ooh, a centimeter and a half. Uh, oh no, it's more than that actually. It's just under two and a half centimeters. There's a little bits on the end, so an inch there. So we're gonna go with that one. Uh, but you can see that lighter colored material underneath. Now that's the dry skin material that's, that's uh, kind of the wax has dried onto, uh, which is giving it this much harder, uh, sort of, uh, much harder uh, sort of um, makeup really. So this is the uh, third patient, the third patient in our compilation. Now, this patient's very different type of wax. And uh, now this wax is really, really super sticky. And uh, we got a good grip on this with the, the, the Zolna tube here. But you'll see as we try and lift, it's kind of, moving and flexing, but not really unsticking from the ear canal. Now wax comes in various different consistencies. You can get very runny wet wax. You can get very dry wax like the last patient here. This is kind of somewhere in between. So you get this, it's kind of pliable, but it's really, really stretchy with it as well. So I'm just trying to get this off the canal wall on the one side. It's not really budging. So we're gonna bring the Jobson horn in here. Let's see if we can drop over the top of this. There we are, just pull forwards, starting to move this piece forwards, try again. 
There we are. You can see how it's molding now as we move the, the canal for uh, the Jobson Horn forwards down the canal. It's almost like plasticy, so it's kind of like molding and, and stretching forwards. So we've got that looser section away there. There we are. You can see that there's this other section sitting just behind it. So if we just try and bring this down, but it's so super sticky. This is kind of like the kryptonite, if you like, for the Jobson horn. The super sticky earwax, as you press down on it, it kind of spreads it and squishes it onto the sides. So we're going to have to go back to the uh, to the suction now. Suction tends to do a little bit better sometimes when you get this kind of sticky wax right at the entrance. Now there is a little bit of skin I can see just underneath. So we're going to pop a little bit of olive oil in here. That's going to reduce the stickiness. It's going to stop it from rebinding and re-sticking to the canal wall. And we're going to lift from the base upwards. Now there is a little bit of skin, almost like a, a skin uh, layer underneath. Now if we can get a good grip on that, we're chances are we're gonna be able to take the whole thing out in one go. So you can see what I'm doing here is just lifting, constantly trying to get this layer underneath there and then we're gonna try and bunch it all into the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, into the jobs, into the Zolna tube, my goodness me, into the Zolna tube and hold on to it really tightly and then bring the whole thing down. There we are, you can see that skin layer now underneath as we're lifting now. And you can see how it kind of folds in, almost like material, it kind of folds and forms these little creases all around the outside edge. And we're gonna hold all of that in the end of the Zolna tube. And you can see this kind of circular motion I'm making here with the tube. And what I'm doing is I'm unsticking the skin all the way around repeatedly, just to try and get it all off the canal walls and try and take the whole thing out in one go. Lots of wiggles. I don't this wouldn't this probably wouldn't be a wiggle. I don't know what you call this one. Check it in the comment section below. Probably a swirl, <laughs> I think. So we kind of got this going. There we are. It's all coming away really nicely. Uh, there we are. You can see that skin layer underneath there that formed the whole length of that plug. And there's the uh, there's the eardrum there looking nice and healthy. Uh, so we've got ooh, two uh, two and a half centimeters again. So we've got an inch uh, of wax uh, for this one as well. Right, we're coming on to the last patient uh, in this compilation in a second. Uh, guys, I don't really moan about things a lot, uh, but this one really struck a chord with me and I'm gonna explain why now in a second. It really kind of ground my gears a little bit. So this lovely, lovely lady, bless her, came through, feeling really, really blocked up, has been to a high street chain, uh, and we're seeing this a lot at the moment, which is why I wanted to bring it up in this video. What we're seeing they're doing at the moment is people are going on with wax and rather than sort of lose the sale of a hearing aid, uh, we're finding, I'm well certainly here, I can't say for everybody, but I'm finding that patients are being tested when they're completely blocked up with wax and they're relying on something called a bone conduction test result to look at the patient's underlying hearing. Now this is a classic case of why you should never ever do that, is this patient's been sold hearing aids, uh, they're gonna go and pick them up in a couple of weeks after we clear this out, but what you can see here is as we start to remove this material, it's rock solid first of all, I can't see the eardrum at all, which means that they shouldn't have been tested in the first place, uh, but when, when you start to peel this away, what we'll see underneath is this isn't just a wax problem, okay? So bearing in mind this patient's been tested, sold hearing aids, and they're gonna go and pick them up in a couple of weeks after they'd had this done. But when you take a look behind this, this isn't a wax issue. This is a false fundus. Now, whoever saw this patient to, to, to start with, and don't get me wrong guys, there are some fantastic practitioners out there, and I don't ever knock anybody normally, but this really got to me. This poor lady had bought hearing aids on the proviso that when this was taken out, that she'd be able to hear better with her hearing aids in. And what you can see there is that when you take this away, there's actually another underlying problem there, which ideally needs addressing. So this patient would need a referral into the ear, nose and throat department for them to check this over and possibly have a scan done before you even entertain the idea of doing hearing aids. And it might not even be the best option for this patient afterwards. So we're seeing this a lot at the moment is patients are being tested when their ears are completely full of wax, which you should never do. We should be able to see at least 70% of the eardrum before we do it. Ideally, have the ear canals completely clear. And then before you even entertain the idea of hearing aids, you need to be able to see the eardrum, see the ear canal and make sure it all looks nice and healthy. So 
Guys, if you do go across to one of these appointments and they mention that you are completely full of wax, refuse to have your hearing tested. You really shouldn't be getting your hearing tested until your ear canals are completely and utterly clear because who knows what's hiding behind that wax and whether it's just a wax problem that's causing your issue or whether there's other underlying issues such as these ones here. I'm sorry guys, I know I don't normally moan, but do you know what, that really, really got to me because this poor lady was so lovely and she really didn't deserve to have that done. So. Uh, I was going to ask you a question. Um, every so often we periodically check in with you guys, making sure that you're happy with the channel and what we're doing and everything else. Uh, you know, you have become part of a sort of a family for us now. So we do kind of like to make sure that you're ticking along quite nicely with everything we're doing. But I did have one question which helps us to kind of mold the channel a little bit more. I wanted to know, when you um, take a look at the thumbnails for our videos, um, what prompts you to click on that video? Is it the title of the video or is it the thumbnail of the video, the pictures you see on the video? I was just curious so we can kind of adapt it a little bit if we need to. So if you could let me know in the comment section below, that would be absolutely fantastic. Oh yeah, also let me know what you'd like that circular motion to be called. I'm gonna go with swirl, but you know, you can buy whatever you want. So guys, thanks very much for watching the video today. As always, take care of your ears, take care of yourselves and take care of one another and I shall see you again on Wednesday. Bye guys.